Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And with another simpler topic, easier topic, revision sort of integration. But this is a little, you know, <laughs> at a difficult side in the differentiation. Well, not difficult, but relatively. So let me give the heading first the integration of continuous time signals. Now again you can skip this video if you know an integration but uh, you can not skip the whole video get to the end of it okay uh, because I have to draw a conclusion in the end. So you uh, the, the, the end is mandatory. This you can skip if you know integration. Fine. Now integration is what? It's area under the curve. This you know area under the curve and this you know very well. Fine. So now uh, how to find out that you also know very well but let me tell you again that this integration now is only this method the graphical method only is limited to step signals only for step signals okay so now let us have and the final value with continue with the final value of integration this we would come to this point let us take an example we get through an example so this is your t axis this is your x of t axis what do i have is it's 2 from 0 to 3 it's 2 from 0 to 3 okay we have to integrate this function so let me you know give a general name to the integral what will we do is i would be integrating my y of t my x of t is from a negative infinity to some value of t so let's say i name this x of tau with respect to tau to to avoid the confusion let the signal be tau the independent variable will be tau this you know just let it go you know i don't feel quite uh, you know comfortable while recording these sort of easy topics anyways anyway so the integration would be what the integration i would i told you that i would be representing with a y of t so y of t you would have to cover the area from a negative infinity to positive infinity but first you have to get to some points let's say first i cover my area from negative infinity to zero my, my t is zero so what do i have in this particular uh, region the signal is zero so the area definitely has to be zero fine now in this region in this region the area is what the area of the signal is this rectangular wave so it's 2 multiplied 3 it's 6 so the area would jump from 0 to 3 it would now be located at 6 and this you would have to show by a linear increase this you would have to show by a linear increase this is 0 0.6 and finally the point that i said now this is zero so the area would not be zero but because the area is taken from negative infinity to that point so if you take from negative infinity to positive infinity this already includes this area which means that after this point three the area will continue to be six that is the answer integration finally continues with the final area this was my final area that was six so I told you that the integration finally continues with the final area. Let me write it over here. Integration finally continues with the final area. Fine. So this was a direct approach, a direct. Let me have another approach that is called the barrier method or whatever method it is so what do i have in this case is that i have to take my t from a negative infinity to positive infinity but let's say what do i do is i take these barriers what do i do i take my t such that it runs from negative infinity to t that is less than zero so what would be the answer of y of t that would be the integration of x of t with respect to t or tau whatever you write negative infinity to t if t is less than zero so this could be my first case right the next case could be if i run from a negative infinity and my t is somewhere in between the higher limit and the lower limit which means that my negative infinity to t 
x of t dt where t is in between 0 and 3. This could be the second one. And finally, I could take the third that my infinity, my limit goes like this. That t is somewhere greater than the final value. So this would be negative infinity to t x of tau. You could write dt and there my t is greater than 3. So this is what I have. Fine. Now for these integrations, what would I do? These would give me the results what? This signal is 0. So x of t is 0. The integration would give me a 0. This would give me a 0 for t less than 0. Now for the green color, this x of t when it is between 0 and 3. So this is 2. So the integration of 2 would give me a 2t. Integration of 2 would give me a 2t in these limits when this is from 0 to 3. And this one now, so this one you split, this one also you split, okay, from negative infinity to zero you split it first, and then you zero to this. So negative infinity to zero was this, and uh, let me write, let me write. How would we split this one? We would split this first from a negative infinity to zero, then we would split it from zero to three, and yes, the other we are not interested. Similarly, similarly, this one we would, you know, split from a negative infinity to zero, then we would split it from, uh, 0 to 3 and then we would split it from uh, 3 to positive infinity so 3 to positive infinity it's again 0 so over here the function 0 to 3 is 2 it would give you a 3 finally so it would have to stay 3 when t is greater than 3 and this is what you have again Fine. So this was my first example. What is a barrier or discontinuity? The barrier is that at the left side you have one behavior of the signal. At the right side of that point you have another behavior of the signal. This is what we call a barrier. So let me you know, write another example. If my x of t is equal to what? Exponential of 3t. If my x of t is exponential of 3t for t less than 0 and it's an exponential of negative 2t for t greater than 0 so so how can i represent it if this is my d axis this is my y of x of t axis so you have an increasing exponential at this side this would be 1 you have a decreasing exponential at this side this the amplitude is 1 Fine. Now you are asked about the, the, the integration of this signal x of t. So that would be y of t. So now how do we do it? This now the barrier is at point 0. The barrier is at point 0. Why? Because at the left side we have one signal behavior. At the right side we have another signal behavior. So now I can do what? I can uh, take my y of t such that my y of t would be equal to what? My y of t would be equal to negative infinity to t x of tau d tau where, where, where t is less than 0. So if my t is somewhere less than 0. And secondly, if my t is somewhere greater than 0, so I would have a negative infinity to t x of tau d tau t is greater than 0. Fine. Now uh, let me do the, the, the simplifications. So my y of t would come out to be what? Negative infinity to t. This would be uh, this would be what? Negative infinity to t exponential of uh, t less than zero is three t, right? Exponential of three t with respect to t, or let's say tau with respect to tau so this you know it fine you know how to do this you know how to do this the answer is uh, 1 upon 3 exponential of 3t 1 upon 3 exponential of 3t negative infinity you know to put the limits fine then in the second case what do you do it you split it you split it again from a negative infinity to 0 first and then from a 0 to your t again so negative infinity to 0 you already have it and then from 0 to t you have an exponential of a negative 2t so you put the limits you put the limits 
or let me you know write it from here let me directly write it from here what do you have for the first for the first you have a 1 upon 3 exponential of 3t the limits are negative infinity and 0 then plus you have 1 upon 2 exponential of negative 2t the limits are t and 0 so this was for t less than 0 this is for t greater than 0 your y of t would finally come out to be y of t this would be 1 upon 3 exponential of 3t for t less than 0 and this would be a 1 upon 3 plus 1 minus exponential of negative 2t upon 2 for t greater than 0 so what could I do is we know about the unit step signal if I want to write it all together if I need to write it all together what do I do is I say that my y of t is equal to 1 upon 3 exponential of 3t u of negative t plus 1 upon 3 uh, plus yes you can solve this as well and I've already solved it over here 5 by 6 minus 1 upon 2 5 by 6 minus 1 upon 2 exponential of negative 2t multiplied a u of t further you could simplify it as well how you know that u of t plus u of minus t would be equal to 1 you could put it over here you could solve it again this is the final answer for me this is the final answer for me fine but what did i have i told you that this was only for step signals so that was this graphical method this the second method this direct method was for for graphical for step signal this is for what this is the mathematical method or the block method or whatever it is let me have some simpler two or three more examples some simple ones i remove the board first okay let me have what let me have some simpler examples that we would be dealing with what happened so nothing happened just the mic thing dropped off okay so let me have a, an example is my x of t is given like this this is my time axis 4 and then negative 4 this is minus 4 this is positive 4 now I need to know the the integration that is y of t so integration i have represented already with a y of t so have a look the area covered on the left hand side is already zero fine then you have the area covered is four multiplied two is eight so this would jump to eight this you would show by a linear fashion this would jump to eight fine then it the area cover over here is the total area would have to, so this and this would cancel out the area would remain the same so which means this would just uh, drop to uh, you know zero now over here not to zero yes this would drop to zero till four this would drop to zero till four and then it would finally stay zero first we had an increase till eight then we had a decrease and that's final final area is zero so the final answer will continue with the final area fine so the first the second is you have four let me get it a little speed so first you have 4 till 2 then you have uh, 0 till 4 then you have a negative 4 till 6 now the integration of this so the final area is what the final area is 4 twos are 8 4 twos are 8 the final area is 0 we would be continuing with a 0 but let's say what do we have we draw it stepwise this is t this is my y of t so initially it was 0 4 2's are 8 it jumped till 8 till 2 now they stay the same so this is 0 this don't have any area but we're coming from a negative infinity so till 4 this would remain the same then it will decrease to 8 then this decreases to 0 from 8 this is 6 and finally the overall area is 0 this stays 0 I hope this is clear if not let me tell you that first it increases to 8 fine then it remains constant we are coming from a negative infinity when we come from a negative infinity to till 2 this is the case right then we go from a negative infinity till 4 so we include this area as well and this one as well we have to 
and then finally when we go till six so we include all the areas which means this one this one and this one so now I believe it is clear and finally we continue with the final area I hope that is fine so these simpler examples are fine let me draw a conclusion now okay so let me draw a periodic wave over here let me draw a periodic wave this is my t this is my x of t this sort of a wave again the periodic square wave or whatever it is now I'm interested to find the derivative of it I'm interesting to find the derivative of it the derivative of x of t so have a look let's say this is a negative 2 this is a positive 2 so this would be an impulse of plus 4 this would be an impulse of minus 4 this would be an impulse of plus 4 this one of minus 4 at the origin you would have a plus 4 this would be a minus 4 this would be a plus 4 minus 4 again plus 4 again similarly this repeats this is the periodic wave this is the differentiation of the periodic wave so the derivative of periodic wave is also periodic fine the integration now the integration now i of t let's say what do you have how do you integrate it you know it right how do you integrate it so you have what let's say if I start from here so this gives you an area of two units an area of two units fine an increase of two units this gives you a decrease the final value becomes zero then you start from here you have again a try you so you have a you have a triangular waveform like this you know how to get it you know how to get it this is the integration of this wave is this periodic it is periodic fine now let me have another wave another wave is let's say like this this is my t axis this is my x of t axis another wave is let's say like this I hope this video is not getting boring because now I you know this now if you need to draw the differentiation of it the derivative of it if this is my t axis this is my derivative of it so I have a look this is an impulse plus impulse minus impulse plus impulse minus impulse plus impulse minus impulse plus minus plus and minus is the derivative periodic it is periodic you know the definition of periodic right the integration of this again the integration of x of t now you know how to do this you know how to get to the integration talking of this area if this is 2 the, the intervals are 1 each and every one the area of this particular place would be 2 this would jump to 2 it would stay 2 now this is 2 so 2 plus 2 would jump to 4 it would stay 4 it should be like this fine fine now this would be 2 again so 2 plus 2 plus 2 now would jump to 6 then it would stay 6 over here then now this would be 2 again this would have another rise to 8 now then it would stay 8 then what do you have this one again a jump 10 it would jump to 10 then similarly constant 12 constant 14 constant 16 it would go the final area when my time in, in increases to infinity my area would also go to infinity is this periodic it's not periodic if a signal x of t is periodic the conclusion is the conclusion is if x of t is periodic 
So I would have to rub this a little amount of space from here, let's say. So I remove this space. Now have a look. If x of t is a periodic signal, x of t is a periodic signal. So what do you have? The, the derivative is also periodic. If x of t is periodic signal, its derivative is also periodic. Now, now what do you have is, what about the integration? We saw in one case the integration was not uh, periodic, in the other case integration was not periodic. So this is the case, now this goes to the average. What about integration? So this deals with the average. If the average value of the signal is zero, the integration is periodic. And if the average value of the signal is not equal to zero, integration is aperiodic. It's not periodic. This is what it is. You can check from here. The conclusion was this one that I needed to tell you. I told you in the beginning that this was the important point in the video. This is the only point important in the video. The rest of it is not. You could have easily skipped this video. A signal is periodic, its derivative is, is periodic, whatever the case is. But integration is not periodic if the average is not zero. Over here, have a look, the average is not zero. We have an average value. If the average value is zero over here, plus cancels out the negative, the integration is periodic. That's it. That's all about this video. See you in the next video with I don't know whatever the topic is. Till then, take care of yourselves, everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers and do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.